We ended our last video by concluding that if you put p-type next to n-type, then some of these free electrons in the n-type will migrate over to the left, and some of these free holes in the p-type will migrate over to the right. As a consequence, we'll get a depletion region, which I can show right here, where there's no free charge. In fact, there is excess charge, but it's not free to move. So this is excess negative charge here and excess positive charge over here, which has created an electric field pointing to the left. And that's a characteristic of the built-in depletion region of a diode. We got P and we got N. And I'm saying, what if instead we connect this to a voltage source? So I'm going to make a little sketch of what we have. P here and N here, and my voltage source, maybe it's a battery, is going to be hooked up like that to the PN junction. So I'm going to have some positives over here and some negatives over here. That's going to make an electric field inside of this system that's pointing to the right. It's actually opposing the built-in electric field of the uh, migrating charge carriers. And what it will do is it will shrink the depletion region. So this is called a forward bias when it's connected like this. And I'll show you what happens. During a, sh a forward bias, we actually get the situation where far fewer of the free charge carriers are able to migrate to the other side. So the depletion region is very, very small. Now, the fact that there's a depletion region means that there's still some positive charge here and still some negative charge right there. But what we saw previously as the voltage between one side and the other, this was very, very wide and therefore actually also very, very tall. That's voltage as a function of position in the x-axis. What we'll see instead, if we have a forward bias, the depletion region is much narrower, maybe it's from here to here, which means that the voltage change is very, very small as a function of position. So, uh, oh, sorry, this is not very good labeling. I'm going to give you an axis right here. That's the center. That's this line right here. And in the case of forward biasing, the voltage uh, increase becomes very small because the electric field that's now, well, it's not the built-in electric field, it's the effective electric field now of the fact that these charge carriers have moved is very small. Now, over here, we've got free holes that can move and it can actually carry charge. And over here, we've got free electrons that can move and carry charge. Notice they can now communicate with each other because the depletion region is so small and this sucker will conduct electricity. On the flippy flippy though, what if we hook up a reverse bias? Let me draw you a little sketch of what that would look like. I'd have P and N, and I'd just put the battery the other direction. And this diode will say no simply because we've now increased the built-in electric field. As a consequence of putting the battery the wrong way in this reverse bias, we have even more holes from the left side going over to the right side and even more electrons from the n-type going over into the p-type. So this guy right here, this is plus, this is minus, and this is called reverse bias the reverse bias makes it even worse of a conductor than it was before you started. So that's how a diode is a one-way electron flow valve. It will not allow current to go if you're reverse biased, and it will if you're forward biased. And to summarize all of this, like we've increased the voltage barrier dramatically here. I'm gonna draw that same sketch that I had over there but for a reversed bias system, and I'll make a graph of, I'll be a little bit more careful, voltage as a function of separation. And now the depletion region is huge. It's from there to all the way over there, and we've got a steadily changing and therefore really dramatic barrier voltage, and so no current will flow during a reverse bias situation. In fact, if we summarize all of these results, we can get ourselves a graph of the current as a function of the applied voltage. So let's make that graph right now. If I make a graph of current through a diode versus the applied voltage, I will find that as soon as I get over some threshold voltage, probably has something to do with the built-in voltage, I'm gonna find no current early on, and then I'm going to find suddenly, actually the diode like turns on right here. And suddenly, well this doesn't have an infinite slope because that's not realistic. There is actually going to be some thermal stuff going on and a little bit of effective resistance, but what we've got is nearly infinite 
nearly infinite conductivity and almost no resistance. In fact, if you continue increasing the voltage without bridling in your current a little bit, you'll destroy the diode this direction. That's dangerous. Um, I want you to point out if you keep going this direction, if you keep going this direction, you're going to get no current because it's reversed biased over here. Reverse bias over this direction. But uh, we can continue on a little bit and see what happens. If we continue on, we continue going over here. Ultimately, we're going to reach the breakdown voltage of the diode way over here. It's very, very big, and some diodes are actually used in this range. Many of them will be destroyed if you do this, but at some point, you reach a very large breakdown voltage. And then current begins to flow the other direction. But this is often dozens of volts, whereas our go through voltage is maybe half a volt or one volt or something like that because of the built in potential. I hope you've learned some about diodes. And again, this is a rather tricky topic, but um, this is only the beginning. You should study solid state physics, or it also goes by the name condensed matter physics. Next video is going to be on solar cells and photo detectors, so stay tuned.